Hello, Buttercup. Welcome back to my channel. Today's book review is Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. That is a lot to say. I am so glad that I said it in one sentence and I didn't have to edit that because I was I was struggling a little bit. <laughs> Not gonna lie. This book, amazing. I'm just gonna come out and say it. Amazing. Five out of five stars. How did I find this book? Actually, I found this book on Goodreads while I was just scrolling by. It was sponsored. And I saw the book cover and I was like, oh, it's about fairies. Yes. And I could tell, not just from the title, because the title was a little, it was a little crushed. But as you can see, I'm just going to show you the, <laughs> hello, I can show you the book cover as I'm describing it. You can see the wispiness, the whimsical, the playfulness, the nature, the colors that you might attribute to fairies. Then you see Encyclopedia of Fairies. Now, Emily Wilde is a fairy expert. She is a professor or try, trying to be a professor. She works in Oxford and she used to go to Oxford, Cambridge. Okay, I get those two mixed up. I apologize to people that are really pro-Oxford and pro-Cambridge, and I know that they fight a lot. <laughs> and she does research and all that stuff for uh, that big college, university. <laughs> uh, I'm struggling. She is creating an encyclopedia. <laughs> it's pretty straightforward, of fa fairies. And so she's going to travel by herself up to the north. And I can't pronounce the name, but it's very Norse. You have elves, you have just fairies with wings, and you have brownies, and you have hobgoblins, like that type of thing. The writer didn't change the lore of that. She's just adding to it. And then it's like the whole thing of Emily is trying to figure out because these are, this is a legitimate race that's around other humans and they have always been there. But for a long time, people just thought it was fake until researchers from many, many colleges, universities across the world finally took it seriously instead of just myth and legend. And then started going out and figuring out that, yeah, there are such things as fairies and there's a lot of different fairies. And they're dangerous. <laughs> so that's the whole thing. Wrap that up really fast. And she is accompanied later on by a fellow professor, scholar. I'm going to go with scholar because I don't think he does professor stuff. He is definitely a scholar, though, and he goes out and works with, you know, towns, it's it's not cities, towns or villages in remote areas trying to uh, do research for fairy hunting and fairy excavating and all that stuff. What's basically what Emily is doing. So, but, you know, they run into a problem, multiple problems, actually. But then, you know, I think it was very cozy not very violent though fairies in this particular um, case in this book are violent so the writer is verging on the lore that they are violent and you can't trust them at all and not even playful but seeking thrills with humans in usually bad ways. I would say almost all, like 99% <laughs> bad ways because they just don't understand humans and they think that humans are playthings. So they're just, they're gonna play with humans like a cat would with a bird, just smacking it on the head until it dies. Yeah, that's what the fairies are like 99% of the time. There is a twist in the story. I'm being vague because I really want you to read the book because it's fantastic. And if I if I say names and stuff, then you'll connect it to like the big twist. I don't want you to because like I was reading the book and I was like, holy shit, I didn't even see that coming. Oh my god. And then it was it was a wild ride. It was a fantastic ride, but it was wild. And I just wanted something that 
was fun and it's it, there's serious topics because fairies are violent and mean and sly and play with humans in not good ways but Emily and her group of friends outwit the fairies all the time even when it becomes very dangerous you know about middle to the end of the book lives can be lost but Emily is so smart and eager to learn and she's open to learning but she's also very careful and respectful of fairies that she can slide out with ease in most situations because she knows so much about fairies but she also respects them and she knows what and what not to do and what and what not to say this lore is that the author is basing the book and this overall story on is that fairies can't lie which most people go off of but they can find loopholes and they can play tricks and they can withhold information and they can even tell half truths so if you say one thing like oh I really like your dress but then you say that other dress would look better on you it's the truth, but you're saying that technically the dress, you like the dress, but it's not good. It's not enough compared to that dress over there that you should wear. That would make you look better because it's a better dress. That type of thing. It's very thinly veiled and you can really mess with people's heads. And that's what fairies do. And that's what is really the main subject in this novel and it's not trying to make fairies playful in any way they're playful but in a malicious way with humans and with the other fairies as well and there are a lot of rules that you have to follow so you don't piss off the fairies <laughs> i don't know this might not be mainstream but when i was growing up in a neo-pagan household the saying was don't piss off the fairies because then they're going to steal your keys, steal your shoes, hide your shoes, break the buttons off your shirt. That's basically what's going on with this novel. <laughs> and I think I relate to this novel way more because I grew up with people thinking that there were in fact fairies. <laughs> there are still people in my family that still think that. There were some people in my family are like well i'm not sure but i don't want to piss off the fairies so i'm gonna leave milk outside the door <laughs> and it's kind of like that still in certain parts of scotland wales and but especially ireland they're like i don't know for a fact but we're about to bring up the crops and stuff and i don't want to piss off the fairies so i'm gonna give them what is expected which is like it depends where you go in Ireland but let's we're just gonna go with a bucket of milk on the outskirts of you know a wooded area or um, a plate or like a bowl of milk outside the person's front door because you know you need those crops you you do you really do so just do it <laughs> you know if I don't, what are the consequences really bad? So don't piss off the fairy. So I think there is a bit of fun. Like I don't believe that stuff anymore, but it was actually a really fun childhood thinking that there were fairies and elves and mermaids. I'm just saying. And that's basically what the book's all about. Like they're trying to uncover this information, but in a scientific way, because yes, in fact there are fairies and what they would say as elves are like human looking fairies i'm interested to see if we get to talk about elves or we're going on the really really old irish or which would be celtic belief that the chua di danan which you would call fey now they used to be gods and goddesses and then they were pushed away into the caves and then into the other world and so what you would see they're still fey or we would say fairies but then you know they kind of broke off in different 
groups, a lot of people would say that they are actually elves and not fairies. So like they would, they're the original fae. So fae is the race. And then you have elves, fairies, brownies, hobgoblins, goblins, that type of thing that came from Tuat de Danan, which are often gods and goddesses of Celtic, namely Irish paganism. So it's a, it's a weird thing. It's a, like, it's a lot. I wouldn't say it's weird. It's a lot to soak in. <laughs> but I can tell that's kind of where the author is pulling from, specifically with the fairies in this novel, though she has other novels coming up. So I think she might be like traveling. The, well, I know uh, Emily is going to be traveling the world based just solely on the title. The title is like the uh, Encyclopedia of the Other World, something like that. So she's interesting, maybe she's going to the other world, I don't know. But the other world is what a lot of the legends and the myths will say that where the, what you would say, other beings are. Other beings would be basically just mythological creatures, trolls, elves, fairies, mermaid, kelpies, vampires, anything like that, the other world has them because actually not vampires. Werewolves and vampires are different. I'm so technical here, but this is a lot. It's a lot. I just was, I was just so excited. <laughs> I'm still excited. The other world has all that I said except the werewolves and the vampires because they can walk around because they're, they have human stuff in them. And so, but they aren't physical beings like us. Like we are physical. The elves and the fairies and the mermaids are different energies. They're like, a, they're not physical entities like we are, you know, we can, <laughs> we can slap ourselves and do all this and we can interact with physical things versus the other beings are in other world, we would say in other dimension. And that is their plane of existence. So when they come over here, things change. It's not the same, especially, you see this a lot when people go into the other world, time is different and it's usually it usually goes faster. So you're over there for 10 minutes, it's actually 10 hours. It's just different, we're in different dimensions basically. And that is hinted at, not even hinting at that is a fact in this book and it, it really is connected to the plot and what's all that's going on and I really enjoyed that there are just nuggets of stuff that I grew up with that I see in this novel and I'm like I love it <laughs> I can fully understand what she's doing and I give the writer props for that. I really love it. So I'm excited for any and all novels about this world, this story, these character, these other beings. I just give them all to me. Give it. I'm, I am invested. And I happen to find it just from it being sponsored randomly on Goodreads. Usually that does not happen. Actually, that has never happened. Not even usually. It has never happened before except this one book. And I am so grateful that the algorithms figured it out that I would enjoy it because, oh, it's perfect. It's per perfect. It's perfect book. I laughed. I cried. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I can't even, I can't even did all over the place. So I definitely recommend this novel if you are into low fantasy. I'm going to, it's not, it's definitely not epic fantasy. I'm going to say low fantasy because it's based in the real world. But it's, it's like an interesting mix of real world and not real world. Not contemporary though. It's in like the 1910s historical fantasy. I'm going to go with historical fantasy. It's historical fantasy. And the vibe is somewhat relaxed, somewhat cozy, but not truly either of those subgenres, which is, it's a nice touch.
touch. It's a good touch and I enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching my rave review and a little bit of a rant, but a positive rant on fairies and the history. And I don't know if that completely made sense, but it did in my head because I know where the author's coming from. <laughs> and that's why, I, I think that's a big reason why I love it. And I suggest that even if you might not know where the her research is to make this world and this book come to life, you'll still enjoy it. It's totally fine. I'm just, I'm just weird. Okay. I grew up a little weird, but fun weird, but still weird. It's okay. I have no regrets. Thank you so much for watching. Go out and buy this book and read it or get it at your library. I got it at my library, but I'm going to buy this book. So I'm going to go and buy out, buy this book with you. And then we're going to have a fantastic time. Okay. And I can't wait for the next book. <laughs> Thank you for watching my eagerness for all things Emily Wilde. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.